This video is one in a series of videos that cover database topics in three themes. We look at Oracle Apex, Application Express for web applications, relational database concepts for designing and building databases, and SQL, the programming language for working with a relational database. If you want to work with the video series, you can go to this URL to get the scripts and handouts. In the previous video, we created a master detail form for the animal shelter that uses person data and employee data. Now we're going to modify the data source SQL code for the master so that it filters to only show employees in the master form. We'll also edit some of the properties of the master form. In particular, I want to show pagination, switching that from scroll to page, because that allows you to set the number of rows to display on a page. We'll also edit the layout and put the detail region beside the master region. And finally, we'll take a quick look at the single row view and edit options. So I'm logged into Apex in the Animal Shelter workspace. Currently, I'm logged in as Mina Mendez, and I'm going to go to our development application, and I'll go ahead and run it, log in, I'll go to people, and I should have been a little more creative in my listings, but we do know that people, the second one, is the master detail. So I'll click on that, and I see the master detail. Now I want to edit this page, and if I go to the regions and select the master, which is person, I see my SQL query, the data source. I'm going to edit that because I want it to filter only on employees. Let me run this again and just remind you that if we filter, let's say, on Sanchez again, and we see the detail section down below here, where we know Teresa is an employee. The fact is, we don't need to see all people in the person's table. We really want to use this as a master detail for employees. So we're going to see the person data, but only for employees. And we'll see the specific employee data in the detail section. So that's why I want to edit this. I will go ahead and click on Edit come back here and we're going to modify this code. We'll modify this code by doing an inner join between persons and employees. And I did an Apex 14 SQL video that talks a lot more about joining the tables and the ways that you want to join the tables. Right now we want to say persons inner join with employees, and that's because we want to limit the person records shown to only those that correspond to a row in the employees table. And so we have to say how to join those tables, and that's going to be persons.perseID is equal to employees.perseID, where perseID is the foreign key in the employees table. Now, this code is going to generate an error. If I do a check up here to validate, then I'm getting column ambiguously defined. That means that I need to identify which columns are in this code that must have a table name in front of them. I already did that here because I knew I had purse ID in both tables, a column by the same name. But I also have it up here in my select clause. So I'm going to do persons dot purse underscore ID. Because it's an inner join, it could have been in persons or employees. We get the same data. Now let's try that. I still have a problem. If you go look at the data model, you'll see that both tables have a date underscore created and date underscore modified. So again, I'm going to specify which table we're referring to when we list a column name. Let's try that. So now it says it's successful. We'll click OK. Before we filtered, 
if I recall right, we have 121 people, but only 26 employees. So I'll save this and I'll run this. And I'll get rid of my filter and I'll scroll down and I see 26 persons listed in the master section and then a corresponding record when I pick something and I have to deselect Teresa and come down here and now we're seeing Gloria Borman. I want to change a little bit about the layout here. I want to move employee info alongside the person data. So I will select the employee info and scroll down and where it says start new row I'll say no and we see the impact of that here in the layout midsection of page designer. So if I run that, I guess I needed to save it first, then I'm getting this look. So if I pick somebody over here such as Daryl, my columns are pretty scrunched because I have to limit the size of the browser window to fit with what I want to record in the video. But let me check Daryl here and then we see his related information. When I scroll down I would still like to limit the display over here on the left hand side so that I don't see all 26 rows and have to use the scroll bar. So I will come over here to edit page again and I will go to not to the region itself but to the region attributes and I will scroll down till I get to pagination. By default you get the scroll bar and I don't know what the maximum number, it might be 50 rows, I might be getting that confused with uh, what you get in output from SQL Developer, but I don't want to see 50 rows or even in this case 26. I want to switch to page when I do that and save that and run this, then I get an option here under Actions, and I should have shown you, but it wasn't there before. I get a Rows per Page option. So I'm going to select 10, and now I'm getting 10 rows per page. With my small screen, I think I might actually go ahead and select 5. Then I can make my navigation choices and move through the records in the master. Now as a side note I should mention that some customization doesn't hold as you log out and come back in. The page setting will be set. If I sign out as Mina Mendez and I go in as Mark Adams, I think that's my other developer, then when I go to the report, I am seeing the changes I made in the layout, except now we're getting kind of a default apex preference for how to show the rows in the master form. So I, as Mark, would need to come up here under Format and change that to 5 if I want it to be 5. There is a way to save some of these settings by allowing people to save the report format, but I'm not going to get into that. I just want you to realize that some options in your formatting may have to be redone each time you log back in. So think about this. I'm now logged into the application as Mark Adams. As a designer, I'm still Mina Mendez. And if I haven't shown you before, let me just scroll down here real quick. Anytime Mina Mendez makes a change, her ID and the date and time are captured here. So we have ongoing auditing that tracks things that have been done in the application design. So I'm Mina Mendez here, and I'm Mark Adams, notice up here and when I'm logged into the application itself, not into Apex. The last thing I wanted to discuss in this video is the use of the 
single row view and edit option. You do have the edit option and you can edit in this format, but I think I would probably make a selection over here and by default, by the way, as we go from one page to the next, the first row is always selected. It's the active row. I can unselect it and select someone else. But I'm going to come over here and next to the check mark, I'm going to say single row view. I did show that once in a previous video, but right now it's in display only, so I can't change anything here. I have to come up here to click edit, and when I do, then the things that I can edit that aren't the primary key or the foreign key, I can now do that by making a selection. I'm not going to change anything here. We'll want to use things such as list of values for status and role so that people can only select the options we want them to pick from. The same thing for supervisor ID. So we'll come back and do some more fine-tuning on this master detail in another video.